Miles Anthony Jones here with Brigade Boats and I've got another customer project for you guys that I recently completed and in this video I'm going to give you a full walkthrough of this John Boat Bass Boat build. She's a 1436. I did the interior. I did the exterior. It's got a lot of trick details guys. Can't wait to share it with you. Stick around. I'll show you everything in this video that I did to this boat. So when this boat was brought to me it was bare aluminum. It was a raw hull. It had two bench seats in it and it had been sandblasted. So raw aluminum, so the first thing that you'll notice is that me and my good friend Chris at ATF Hydrographics sprayed this nice smoke gray color. It's actually Typhoon Gray. Really, really like this color. And as you can see, the old port a personal project that I haven't had a whole lot of time to work on these days. It's the same color. We airbrushed this boat. This one's just a straight up color with no accenting very very clean look now there's a lot of details in this boat so i'm going to do my best to kind of show them all to you and um, try to explain everything as best as possible this entire boat interior wise is framed out of 1 16th angled aluminum and in the front deck in certain points i did use 1 8 tube aluminum for upright support and uh, it's made a really really solid framing package to deck over and i did do a framing video walkthrough so if you're interested in that you could check out what it looks like without all the decking and hatches and raw framing and there's a lot of framing in this boat believe it or not even though it's a 1436 a lot of framing so check it out links up above this boat is what i call my hybrid setup it's all aluminum core framing and then it's actually half inch plywood it's marine grade plywood that i took the time to coat in fiberglass resin and then once the resin was put on real thick, then I gently sanded it, not to burn through the resin, but to uh, get it level and then give the carpet glue something to bite to. And this may be the last time I do a boat build of this nature. It's very, very labor intensive. So now I'm just trying to steer my customers to the all aluminum. We wanted to try to stay in a budget on this one, which is why we did it. But in the future, I honestly probably won't provide this service. But nonetheless, if you're looking at this build, it shows you what you can actually accomplish with half inch ply. And it turned out really, really nice. And it's going to last my customer a long time the way that I did it. And I've got videos on my channel showing you how I actually seal and do the wood as well. So check those out. All of the carpet in this boat is Bass Boat Carpet purchased at tbnation.net. And this color is actually called charcoal. And guys, as far as this build is concerned, I'm going to leave the links, as I always do, to a lot of the items I used in this build down in the video description. Some of the parts in this build came from Amazon, and uh, some of the parts in this build, including the carpet and uh, the trolling motor tray and the trolling motor mount, some of the bigger items came from tinyboatnation.net. I'll leave all that down in the description. You can check it out. So if you're doing your own project, this video will kind of show you what I used. And uh, you, you get to see it. And then if you want to do it yourself, then you can see exactly what I use and order it yourself and, and try to pull this off. So uh, check it out, guys. If you go to tinyboatnation.net, you get a 5% off discount if you use the code BRIGADE at checkout. So we've got a hook for the customer provided this unit. I believe his dad had it in a boat and we're recycling it on this build. But we've got the double shot transducer mounted to a Minn Kota um, transducer mount. 70 pound edge cousins in the house and it's paired up with a nate's custom boats and accessories trolling motor mount now these are available on tinyboatnation.net and they're super awesome um, they come prefab comes with a mounting bracket which you can't really see it's up under there it's an l bracket it comes with two of them actually for different heights i will say what i've done underneath the deck is there is framing so this bolts through the deck through aluminum and it's got a lock nut and uh, super, super solid, riveted to the front, overlaps the front of the boat, and it's riveted down, and then mount the trolling motor. And again, Nate's custom boats and accessories parts in the house on the front deck with the, um, with the recess tray for the trolling motor pedal. And uh, we've got a gas adjustable pedestal seat, and uh, that's kind of the inspiration behind the color scheme. We went with this blue. We got it color matched at my local vinyl shop. Big shout out to Red Barn Graphics in Jefferson, Georgia. And then he's got the graph on a pretty large ram mount. Get it up elevated so he could sit there, work his trolling motor, find some fish, have a good time. Right here, 
is um, this is for a nav light. So nav light goes in and it's the stick one. So it, it comes up and um, illuminates over the front of the boat. Little trick I did here, I used a through hole fitting, cut the bottom off to widen the hole. Um, and then I ran, ran the cables for the uh, graph. So it just gives it a clean look instead of using like a standard grommet. I guess so. Uh, let's take a look at what's up under the deck. Let me deploy the trolling motor. Um, this hatch, quick note guys, I just wanted to give him storage space and on this boat, cause it is a 1436, there's not a lot to work with. So we, we crammed a lot of storage into this front deck, but this hatch here, you only have partial access to, um, when the trolling motor is, uh, is up on the deck. So I'm gonna pop it off. I'll show you that hatch, that hatch, that one and that one, and we'll work our way through the boat. As you can see, when this trolling motor goes up, this cable actually flips up over the graph. So um, just something to think about when you're mounting your units is, is how that's going to play out. Works out great in this setup. So let's take a look at these hatches, guys. Um, just super clean work, man. As you can see, you've got wood hatches, got a runner underneath. So, you know, to prevent them from warping and to just uh, beef them up a little bit. You've got a divider underneath. You've got a drain back there, actually for um, any water that may go into this tray, actually drains it, and feeds it out front to a, uh, to a channel. So up underneath this is still raw aluminum. The carpet only goes to right about here. And then in that front area, um, there's still channels and I left them there by design just for water drainage to work its way to the back of the boat underneath the floor. The floor is sheet aluminum. I believe it's 060 with uh, one inch closed cell foam under that in between the ribs. And you can see some of the uprights under there is the structural support to, uh, to beef this deck up. Other side just mirrors the side I showed you. Um, same deal on this, you'll see there are lights underneath. And I'll show you the trolling motor is actually, the wiring goes under the deck. And I do have it if I could get to it, it is on a quick connect, which is pretty cool. And it just sits up under there and you can kind of see up under there what I was talking about. This is where the original middle bench was in the boat, right where this hatch was. This was actually the bench. Then I extended past it, the deck, and then mirrored this, this area with a second area um, to, to add another storage unit. So just keep in mind, this was where the bench was. We added a hatch here and then um, did the old reverse door. Pretty cool. And as you can see, there's lights in all the hatches. And then you can see that original wall of the bench was retained. Some gas strut action. Sorry, my hand was in the way. And then on this side, what I did was back in there You've got your fuse box, and you got on the left a USB port. So if you want to charge anything inside the hatch out of the way, you could do it there. Over here, you've got your nav light up top. You've got your stern light on the bottom on quick clips. And um, that's pretty much it, man. Again, angled aluminum framing that's visible. Everything is visible. It's got the, the rivets, countersunk, and... Uh, and with these returns, I was able to mount the struts. Over here, I had to do something a little bit different. But it worked out fine. And then you can see under there the framing with the tube supports and everything um, for this area, for this wall, for the deck. And again, half inch ply with the runner underneath. Color match to the boat for the underside of the hatches. Gas struts. Piano hinges. Got those from Tiny Boat Nation, and uh, they're stainless. All the hardware on this boat is stainless, so all, all the screws, any of these, any of these, all stainless. And again, another thing I had to pay attention to was clearance. So as you can see, hatch clears the seat. You can open and close the lid without hitting the seat. Moving on to the cockpit area, Half inch ply floor, again with a resin, the carpet. It's got a one inch closed cell foam underneath it in between the ribs. Uh, still retain the factory channels for water drainage. One of the cool things I did here was created a lip 
nice return for the carpet it gives it a gives it just just as far from a design standpoint it's just a clean look and then it kind of protects the electronics a little bit and uh, protects your lights and then everything in here has been wrapped in 3m carbon fiber what i did here was it's an aluminum panel with a secondary panel that i fabricated out of aluminum that actually mounts the different units and so what we've got here is an eight gang switch panel and then we've got another combo panel that's got an on off to operate these three items um volts and another usb and uh 12 volt power you got your live well timer variable live well timer and you got your battery kill switch battery kill switch is reverse mounted so the housing is actually on the back end um hard to explain but basically i cut a hole mounted on the back side of the panel with plenty of clearance that way you don't see all the trim work um you just see the screw heads so a little trick i learned from nate nate's custom boats and accessories it's so bright out here i can't really see my screen but i hope you guys can see um, how cool that turned out in the shot so that's all the electronics everything in this boat is ran with anchor marine um, tin copper wire again you've got the fuse box underneath here in this hatch and of course everything is labeled and ready to go easy access out of out of the, the, the way from any um, intruding water so uh happy with the electronic setup on this one and uh here is the live well and um this thing really really turned out nice this is a custom fabbed live well what I mean by that is this is a, a Plano storage trunk. It's a sportsman's trunk, which is just a really nice trunk that I've cut to fit, took the top off. Um, not the same thing as a tote because this material is more flexible and I've actually used that in my other boat. And uh, that, that live well at this point is three plus years old, got a lot of abuse and they work great. Um, so what I've done here is I've taken the trunk, I fit it in where the original rear bench used to be, outfit it with the flow right, aerator head combo pump out nozzle. You've got you've got another an Atwood tsunami pump for liable recirculation. Got a kayak drain plug in the bottom um, because that pump is only going to pump out so much water. When it gets below that, you're going to have another half inch of standing water, and that drains it to the back of the boat. And I'll show you that when I get back there um obviously what you notice the most about this is just the aesthetics what i did here is this is a sheet aluminum 090 sheet aluminum top for the splash guard with this lip this is angled aluminum lip that overlaps the original bench molding and um, that's wrapped in carbon fiber and then this is all wrapped in the same vinyl um, that we use for the rest of the the boat um, for the decals and again that's color matched to the pedestal seat up front your uh, overflow is there and then back over there is your live well fill and uh and that's it and as you can see i'll walk around nice little return there for the strut mount back deck there's your your stern light this just mounts uh, we got new nylon cleats throughout. Back here, it's your live well fill on the back, the transom. We'll take a look at all the juice in this thing. Uh, the trolling motor is 24 volt. We want to put the batteries in the back to kind of balance the weight. He's going to be up front fishing. You can see that this junk in the trunk is squeezed in here, man. We're running. Two group 31s, a group 27. This is for all the onboard electronics. That feeds into that side to where the, uh, the fuse box and the uh, positive, or I'm sorry, the negative bus bar is. And then these two are running to the trolling motor. You got the trolling motor wire coming all the way from up front. Six gauge tying in back in there is your circuit breaker for the trolling motor. And then uh, we've, got, we've got a bilge. We've got the live well fill pump, which directs the water around and through and back to the live well. And then we've got your Noco Genius Gen 5 three bank onboard charger. It's hooked up to all the batteries. All you gotta do is simply 
pull the cable out, plug it in when it gets home, charge all the batteries. Um, again, just trying to keep everything real clean back here. We did get final paint in there. Believe it or not, you can't really see it much because it's so covered up. Got three battery trays custom mounted in there with uh, NOCO straps. And uh, that's pretty much it. Besides, see that little hose? That hose actually feeds from that live well kayak drain plug I showed you. So when he gets home and he drain, drains his live well, if there's a little bit of water in it, he could pull that plug. He could pull this plug, stick this hose out the hole of the back, and then drain the little bit of water that's left in the live well actually out the back of the boat. So just another little trick I did. And uh, back here, of course, again, you got the... The hatch with the runner underneath it everything strutted and uh that's pretty much it man did a little carbon fiber back there to kind of spice it up a bit but man this thing turned out killer super proud of this one guys it brigade boats and um let me know if you have any questions regarding any of it still booking builds as of right now we are pretty far out i'm growing a list of builds and this one is going home tomorrow nashville tennessee baby he hasn't seen any pictures and i haven't posted them on my socials which by the way if you're not following me check me out on instagram ada of jones facebook brigade boats and uh if you're watching this video if you're not subscribed consider subscribing to the channel got a lot more stuff coming guys again super happy with this 1436 i'll be back on that one in the future but i've got another customer build showing up in 48 hours and it's going to be bad to the bone when we're done with it. Can't wait to show you that build process. So hope you like this one. We'll catch you in the future, guys.